Hello and welcome to Strange Weekly News. In this show, we'll take a look into the news and headlines to pick out curious reports of the strange, the weird, and the mysterious. Anything from UFO news to science advancements, the paranormal, and stuff labeled fringe science and fringe phenomena. Each news item we go over in the show, I will place all the links to them in the description box below once this live show is over, as well as chapters on the timeline index. Hello and welcome to everyone watching this live, all of my first time viewers and listeners, and of course, everyone watching this on replay as well. Please show your support for my work by hitting that like button right down below and subscribe as we do three live shows right here on this channel every single week, covering topics from UFOs, the paranormal, and things that are unexplained. This was a hot week, and especially... So we've been waiting for this when it comes to UFOs and the UFO phenomenon and UFO transparency and the government, because we just got another skiff. When I say we, I mean, I don't actually mean you and I, I wish, but referring to the government and it was a lot of uh, mixed reactions and it just happened today, Friday, January 12th. I'm going to share my screen here and we're going to get into this. And if you haven't watched the videos, you can find them on Twitter. I highly recommend what some of these people had to say, but we're going to read through some of the really interesting statements because some members of Congress received a classified briefing on UFOs, aka UAP these days. And what's interesting here is Democrat uh, Republican Raja Krishna Murthy of Illinois told News Nation, quote, I'm more concerned than what I was going into the skiff. And I think they have a lot of questions that remain unanswered. And this is really interesting here because the very first skiff that happened uh, last month, I believe, Tim Burchett was like, this was an absolute piece of garbage. All right. Everything that they told us, we already knew. Now we're getting new representatives into this skiff. And when it comes to Raja in particular, he said that he is more concerned since the skiff compared to when he entered that room. And this is really interesting. There could be so many aspects to this. There really can. And, and our minds can go wild here. We could even use our imagination as well, of course, was he more concerned because of the information that has to do with the integration of the government? Are we dealing with interdimensionals? Are we dealing with a type of agreement? Is it not ET at all or interdimensionals, but totally government related, all being reverse engineered equipment and everything that's going on is just a ginormous conspiracy. There are so many possible explanations just based off of Raja's statement that he made to News Nation. But what I find interesting here is, first of all, we're going to hear a lot of people say, oh, well, everything's just a conspiracy and it's it's ours. It's always been ours, always will be. Well, if we compare Tuesday's show when we talked about a sighting that took place in the 1600s, it's kind of hard to say that it was reverse engineered technology of that time. And by the way, air balloons didn't happen, weren't invented until the 1700s. All right. Just I want to put that out there. But if we continue with this thought, then how come the UAPDA was practically denied? Yes, yeah, some of it passed, but a lot of it was chopped out. If there is nothing to hide, why show that you're hiding something? And keep on to that little thought because, of course, we're going to mention the Artemis moon landing, the Artemis program, and how it got delayed several years. And we're going to get into that aspect as well. But continuing on to this skiff that again, just happened this morning, some lawmakers have called for increased transparency, as we know, and the outcome of this briefing could contribute to them learning more about the government's knowledge on the matter. That's what we all want to see. Of course, that's what we all want. But it's very difficult when everything is in different hands, different agencies. And that's that's where it gets very hard, especially when we're dealing with the select committee here, in particular, those that were involved in this skiff, do they have the clearance to know that information? The answer is probably going to be a no. Now, could they have go through all of the screening in order to get that clearance? It's a possibility, but that could take decades. And 
Is this information really in their hands? Are they really in control of this? That is the question that we have to ask ourselves. And that's probably a question that they are simmering on as well. And here I'm referring to the people that we're seeing on screen, dealing with Anna Paulina Luna, Tim Burchett, Matt Gates, um, Maskovich here as well, and Burleson. They are probably having those exact thoughts. And then referring to Andy Ogles of Tennessee, he is a Republican representative. He said, I think that most of the American people fear is true, is that the government, there is an effort to conceal as much information as possible, both from Congress and to the general public. So based off of this information, of course, we can we can dissect this, we can try to understand what he was meaning here, or attempting to describe to the best of his ability what he heard without infringing on any NDAs or any clearances and things like that. He says here, I think that most of the American people fear is true, is that the government is concealing a lot of information, both from Congress and the general public. This is not new information. We've we've heard of this, we've seen this, so on and so forth. But I will say having it come out of a representative's mouth, someone that works for the government, it's interesting. I, I, I just have to say that at the very least, that is interesting coming out of him. And same with Tim Burchett. He has said very similar things. And I would say prior to this, push for UFO, UAP transparency from the government, you didn't really hear government officials and representatives use that kind of language of don't trust the government. What they are telling us isn't fully true. It's going against the narrative, don't you think? Now, to be fair with you, I do not follow politics. I do not know what all these reps are saying aside from covering this topic. So could they be saying things like this in other fields? I, I would, maybe. I am not sure because I do not follow politics as an, of, of any branch or things like that. But here, a lot of people now are having their eyes on the government, I would say more so than ever, really trying to see how they are handling and how they will handle the situation when it comes to the conversation of UFOs, especially over the last years. We have heard that this information and that UAPs is a national security issue. It is a threat, it is a threat to our airspace, so on and so forth. We hear this negative narrative that should instill fear in the people. But these guys, they're saying mm, they're hiding a lot of information and you should keep pushing for what you're pushing for, don't you think? And there, there is more to this. Uh, no filter. Thank you so much. That is so kind of you. And Dan says, hey, Christina, did you see the recent alien interview from Project Blue Book? Also, I want you on my team when we can travel the stars with aliens. Heck yes, I got to get my TARDIS. It's right now in the auto shop, but heck yeah. Um, now, as for that little tidbit, I have not seen it yet, so I don't know, but I'll keep my eye out for that particular one. Interesting. Thank you for that. So then, continuing onward, because we this wouldn't be a UAP government transparency conversation if we didn't bring in Tim Burchett. And so, as I had mentioned a little bit earlier, especially for those that are just getting into this topic, it's kind of difficult. It's very confusing. It's a bit dicey. So, I'm just going to lay a little bit of extra information for those that need the gaps filled in because this wasn't the first briefing that lawmakers have gotten on UAP. But Tim Burchett, who is a representative of Tennessee, among others, have expressed frustration at what he calls a lack of transparency. And Burchett believes the Pentagon is holding back even in the briefings. So he is meeting up with what Representative Ogles said which I, I just need to emphasize, I have not heard representatives say that before, ever. Have you? I got to ask you that. For those that follow politics and all these other different facets and aspects, aside from UFOs, have you heard representatives, lawmakers, those in Congress use that kind of language? And I'm being honest. I want to know. Okay. 
Now, lawmakers' response were varied because some expressed satisfaction with the information that the intelligence community shared and said it provided some clarity. But others shared a very different perspective, raising concerns that the intelligence community supposedly with, was withholding and withholding information on UAP which isn't anything new. Now, for those lawmakers that are saying, you know what, this was, this was pretty darn good. I really like this. Why does he have a Southern accent? I don't know. It just sounded right in that moment. But we have to ask ourselves, are they satisfied because they don't know anything about the topic? Are they satisfied because they were paid to be satisfied? Are they satisfied because they genuinely think it was good information? Every single person, almost every single person, has an agenda, they have their reasons, and they say some things because they're told to, which is really garbagey, but it, that's true. That's the case. And now with Burchett, at least to, from what I'm seeing, this man is speaking his mind. Now, could he, could he be getting some backhand or money? When you're dealing with government officials, you just at this point, you just got to assume that's the case. You just got to assume that's what's going on because corruption is real across all governments, across all over the globe. Okay. But I want to give these people, I do, I want to give these people the benefit of the doubt for those that are saying, you know what? It wasn't really that bad. First, I got to say, bless their heart bless them. They are probably not familiar with the topic and the gravity of this conversation. Because in my opinion, this conversation that we're having referring to UFOs, UAP, UAP transparency is one of the most important conversations that humanity is having right now. And you might say, Christina, why are you saying that? And why do you say that from time to time? If we are able to understand this little tidbit, we should be able to traverse the stars with a bigger and brighter mentality to where we won't be like the Klingons in Star Trek. We're not going to kill everything that doesn't look like us or want to fight with them. And as Ronald Reagan mentioned in his UN speech many years ago, if there is this exterior threat, maybe a UFO threat, will it bring our species together? There's already so much divide going on. Could this topic bring us together? And that's why I believe this is one of the most important conversations that humanity is having right now. And what the government is doing, making this information public, talking about this publicly, it's getting more people interested in this. And that is one of the biggest takeaways, at least in my opinion. But according to the briefing notes obtained by News Nation, lawmakers asked about allegations raised by Air Force veteran David Grush, who as a whistleblower shared exclusive details with News Nation before testifying in Congress. We first heard of Grush back in the summer when Ross Coulthard, a Russi Russian Australian journalist, did a whole interview with him. And this is when the world first heard about this whistleblower coming in from the government and saying that the government has reverse engineer technology. This blew off lids. This went viral insane. And to this day, months later, he's, he's still in the news. People are still talking about him. And now when we mention UAP in the government, UAP transparency, UAP truth, whatever, he is one of the first names that comes out of people's mouths. That's that's significant. Now, take it or leave it. If you think that he's a plant or not, push that aside just for a moment. People are talking about this conversation, and that in itself is one of the biggest takeaways. But Grush brought his concerns, including classified information to the inspector general that couldn't be discussed disclosed publicly. Now, in the interview that Grush gave to News Nation over the summer, he claimed that the government has recovered non-human aircraft of exotic origin, and he claims that he's seen evidence of a secret UFO crash retrieval program. And so then people said, okay, show us the paperwork, show us the bodies, show us the pictures, right? And then you hear this aspect of, well, it's all hearsay. Everyone, all the information that Grush knows, it was given it was told to him by someone else. He didn't see any of it firsthand. And like, yeah, that can, that sucks. <laughs> There's no other better word to use than it sucks. But, but if we're looking at this from an optimistic standpoint, 
it's a it's a step in the right direction. Is he setting a foundation for more UAP whistleblowers to come forward and have this level of confidence to do so? The ones that we've received so far have been burned. Burned like it's nobody's business. People in the UAP UFO community, they're like, oh, we want someone in the government to give us information. We want someone on the inside to tell us what's up. Lou Elizondo did that, but he got burned so bad, so bad that we don't see him anymore. Now, there could be different reasons as to why that may be, why he stepped away from the limelight. People say he was a plant. All the information that he was providing was fake. Some say he's real. He is a hero. But if we push that aspect aside of what you believe, of what if his information was true or not, he came forward. He did interviews, podcasts several times a day. He didn't stop for about a year. But he was being like dragged through the coal. Grush is getting that same kind of treatment. It's very scary. It is for these kinds of people. Again, if their plants are not just in general, it's not just their lives that are in danger, but also their families' lives. And that's where it gets really tough. So this, this is interesting. There's a lot more to unfold here when it comes to this skiff. Hopefully more information will come forward. Hopefully Burchett and others will provide more information on what happened if they can, or if they will receive more skiffs, or if we will receive another UAP witness hearing. We were kind of, I wouldn't use the word promise, but Bursch had said, oh, we should definitely get one by December of 2023, but that came and left. 2024 has already been a very wacky year. It, we're only halfway through January, and it's been interesting. There should be, hopefully, more information to come on this topic as a whole, and it it might maybe be the year of disclosure. Now, we say that every single year. Oh, this this is the year, guys. This is the year of UAP disclosure. And then we're always left disappointed. But how the year is just turning out, honestly, it might be. But what do you think? What are your chances on this? Not chances. Ideas on this. I was reading a comment and I read, and I read it and I said it at the same time. <laughs> What are your ideas on this? Do you think I'm being too optimistic? Do you think there needs to be some pessimism in there? Do you think those some people are too pessimistic and they should be more optimistic? What are your ideas for 2024 based on solely how the last six months have gone? Six months. I think from the summer up until today, we've gotten a lot. We really have compared to any other year when it comes to this topic. Thanks, Dan. I will look into that. Thank you so much. But let, let's see what you have to say. Hillbilly says 2024, year of the jellyfish. Yes. And what's really cool is that jellyfish don't even have brains. There's a whole nervous system going on. It's insane. If you just like look up like the basic facts about jellyfish, you'll be mind blowing. It's it's so cool, actually. I am trying to read your comments as fast as I can. And some of you, some people are bringing up some interesting aspects. Hyde says, when's the next hearing? I have no idea. I have not been given information on that. I couldn't find it online, at least not yet. But hopefully soon. I, I, if I had to guess, and this is just a random guess, okay? I would say maybe February, March. Again, just guessing here. I have no intel. I have no inside people. I'm just saying that's kind of like if Burchett said December of 2023, I'm going to push it a few months. and I'm going to say, mm, let's go with the end of February, March. Sounds pretty good. But I could be wrong. And that's okay. John says humanity deserves the truth. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. But when it comes to the truth, it depends who is providing that information, the language that they're using, because certain language will instill fear or happiness and peace. You see what I'm saying here? So let's say they they say, when I say they, I'm referring to the government, to the media, whatever, right? People that have big audiences and they say, okay, aliens, ET, they're already here or they're visiting. 
depending on the language that they will use, is going to affect how humanity will react to it. So keep an open mind. Try not to be biased. <laughs> and, and remember the narrative. Getting into our next one here, still on the topic of UFOs, it's referring to pilots because early last year, the Pentagon launched a website enabling military personnel and other government workers to report sightings of UFOs. This is, and it's part I didn't know, dating back to as far back as 1945. I didn't know that little tidbit. This is according to the USA Today, by the way. But this is referring to Arrow. And they had their website up, but then for a good handful of months, you were not able to report your sightings. Now, only military personnel could report their sightings. I think that's still the case today. If you were to check the Arrow website, you need to have paperwork clearances. And if you check that box and you say that you have that you are a part of the military or whatnot, there are legal consequences to that. But the move was a response to official hearings on the subjects, which saw military pilots provide their own testimonies about sightings of UFOs off the coast of the um, East Coast of the United States. Now, here, they're also mentioning, referring to USA Today, they're also mentioning that UAP hearing that took place in July and also referring to Ryan Graves' sighting and... Um, for for David Fravor, his Tic Tac sighting was on the West Coast. It was just like right, you know, from San Diego, California, uh, the Catalina Island, that right there. But here, the East Coast, it was mentioned significantly in that hearing, if you wish to listen to it again. It's something that it I think is worth your time. But while the new report system was great for military personnel, it did not offer anything to the general public or even civilian pilots and air crew and the option it didn't give them the option to report anything that they might have seen and i agree with this it's like it's a catch-22 when it comes to ufo stories um, ufo cases topics is that people want to listen to government officials pilots that work for the military more so than a civilian. Now, some people are going to roll their eyes and say, well, pfft, I don't, Christina. Okay, well, you're not a part of that majority, all right? But for the majority of people, they want to hear from a military official, someone with credentials, but it's a catch-22. And why is that? Because people say, ah, don't trust the government. Do not trust anything they have to say. Do not trust any officials. And you can't, well, can you? <laughs> Let me back it up. Can you have it both ways? Can you? Is it possible? Is it impossible? You see what I'm saying here? Because you're going to hear that argument a lot in this topic of don't trust the government. They're never going to give you transparency. They're just going to lie to you back to back to back to back. But then they just want to hear military pilots. They just want to hear military officials give their cases, but not your average Joe. So here, what it's mentioning in this article is that everyone should be able to give their UFO sightings, including civilian pilots and air crew. And here we're looking at people that work for United, right? Which used to be Continental and all these other ones that people that are in the sky on a daily basis, maybe, are seeing strange things, but they are not allowed to report it, at least not to Arrow. So sponsored by Representative Robert Garcia and Representative Glenn Grothman, the new bill aims to change that by creating a reporting mechanism for civilian pilots as well. And it says here by Mr. Garcia, quote, UA tree UAP transparency is incredibly important for our national security, which is why we need to create a space where those in aviation have the ability to report their findings and experiences. And yes, okay, that's my stamp of approval. Puck approves. It's putting that stamp right down there. Because yes, because yes. Now, when we are dealing with civilian sightings, Continuing on that thought with military sightings, right? The reason to why people don't always like civilian sightings is because they're not held under oath. They're not held by their credentials or by their status. So they can lie. They can be a little unhinged and report a sighting that didn't actually happen, right? And they're not going to receive the consequences. Now with military officials, 
in reality, for the longest time, since 1945, maybe before that, they were very scared to report their sightings. Ryan Grays had spoken about this during his UAP witness hearing in July, stating that for those that report their sightings can lose their jobs can lose their status. And so that's why people are a little bit more inclined to believe these military officials because they have more to lose than your civilian ones that are just saying it maybe for a laugh, maybe for fame, maybe because it really did happen, but maybe they just don't have the language in order to properly express what happened. Do you see what I'm saying here? This is where it gets kind of dicey and kind of difficult. And yet... Representative Robert Garcia and Glenn Grothman are saying, at the very least, it should be open to people in aviation, civilian pilots and crewmen. Not open to everyone, okay? It, it, ain't, it ain't open to everyone that you see on the street at Walmart, but it's open to those that have a basic understanding of anomalies that can be seen in the sky, a trained eye for weather balloons, Venus, so on and so forth. And it continues, this bill is another step forward for disclosure and to provide a safe process for UAP witnessing by civilian and commercial personnel. Again, referring commercials, referring to your airports, airlines, that kind of stuff. Now, if the bill does pass, it will also require the FAA to share any information relating to the cases with the Aero Office, the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, so that they can be investigated further. And this is really, really cool because the FAA has, yes, they, they do have a kind of reporting center-ish with certain pilots. I had it and they, then they dropped it and I had it again. It, they're very difficult to work with and to receive any paperwork about people documenting their UAP sightings. They're very caged and they will not usually share that information with you. Now, the FAA and Aero are working together. Now, is this for the public's benefit or it, does it just look nice on paper? Mm, it, gets, it gets hard. It gets hard with these questions. Because we, we don't have the answers. And some are going to say yes and some are going to say no. JJL, thank you so much for that. Thank you. If you're enjoying that show, hit that like button. Right now we have 425 people watching this live. Of course, only hit that button if you're actually enjoying the show. So it continues here in Grothman quotes stating, the bill is a crucial initiative that empowers those on the front line of our skies to contribute valuable intelligence regarding UAP sightings that can help us ensure the potential threats are thoroughly investigated. So here he is using the word threats as government officials do when it comes to this topic. But what's interesting about this, and, and I'm really glad that, that the uh, USA Today was able to capture this information, um, are these particular quotes. To be able to see, to the best of their ability, to see the inside of these representatives' minds, uh, asking questions and seeing how they're answering them. Because every single word has, for the most part, value. And in this case, when Grothman uses the word threats, okay, we, we know what's going on here. We have an idea of the mentality that he has or taught to have or that he's witnessed firsthand. And so it says here, this is another quote from Grothman. It says, with the majority of Americans believing that the government has suppressed information on UAPs, our bipartisan effort highlights our need for transparency from the federal government regarding UAPs to better protect the safety and security of American citizens. He hit the nail on the head here. He is addressing a real issue that people are having, and that is the trust in the government. And he's saying, look, I hear you. I see you. I have social media. I know what's up. I want to address this and say I am on your side. That is the message that he's attempting to convey here. Now, is that the truth? Is that what he's really feeling and thinking in that moment when he gave that quote to USA Today? Uh, we can't read minds. We we don't have that power, all right? Even if we did, Beth, not to tell anybody about that. But here he is saying, look, we, we know, we know you don't trust the government, but we are really trying to push for the very least for UAP transparency. 
But if we use our beautiful big brains that are like, like 10 pounds, by the way, our brains are heavy. They're like eight to 10 pounds plus the skull. It's crazy. But if we use these beautiful things that were given to us at birth, we have to ask ourselves yet another question because I love asking questions. It's what I do best. We have to ask ourselves here, what does UAP transparency actually mean? Is it just dropping all the paperwork at, at your feet that you're able to download from the from the government website? Is that what it is? Is UAP transparency for the president of the United States to say, aliens, that's what's up. Is UAP transparency having a sighting for yourself and the government saying, yep, that was definitely ET, it was definitely a UFO. Everyone has their own interpretation of what UAP transparency actually means. And there hasn't really been a consensus of many people agreeing of what it means, other than we want the government to tell us information about UFOs, UAP, ET, whatever. And in some ways, we're kind of getting that information. We've received reports from Arrow. We received reports from the AOI MSG before it turned into Arrow. We're getting these skiffs to where just the topic is being made public. Do you see what I'm saying here? It's a very complex topic, but more so than anything, there's a lot of room for interpretation and a lot of room for questioning. And I would say of a divide as well for people that have different mentalities on what transparency actually means, what disclosure actually means. If I'm going to be as frank as I can with you, I don't know. I don't know what in their mind, referring to the government, I don't know what transparency means to them. I do not know what disclosure means to them. I know what it means to me, but my definition is going to change from your definition. But 2024 is turning out to be a very interesting year. And maybe we might get those answers. What do you think? Tyler says, disclosure is any information, reveal, release, but full disclosure is showing everything. And that's what I don't think will ever be given by the government. If we are shown everything, it will, cut, it will bring to light so many other projects, uh, so many things that really could be a national security issue. Because if that transparency is for the world, right? That that infinite, that like fully transparent, like a piece of plexiglass. Then you could bring in the topic of, okay, our adversaries are going to take that information, take that tech and use it against us, right? It's those that have the most information, have the most power. And the only way to have that kind of power and knowledge is by not sharing it with others, keeping them dumb, keeping you smart, keeping you in power, keeping other people not. Uh, it's disappointing. <laughs> it really is. It sucks. But that's the mentality of these government officials. But you know what? I want to change up this topic just a little bit with y'all. We've been really diving into this, and I and I love having these kinds of like brain fests with you. Like this is so much fun. <sighs> but we got to bring in about the moon landing, okay? And the Artemis. All right, this is important kind of stuff. And Sasha, thank you so much. Keep being the trailblazer, Christina. Thank you, thank you. And Hides, when will we hear about your data collection tools for 2024? Soon soon thank you so much and no filter aliens are in control no worries hey that's interesting question is what are they actually controlling you know what i mean is it for our benefit or not so many questions right then and there but let's get into our next one here and by the way whoever took these images of the crew for the artemis program honestly they need to raise like this is a really really fantastic image um I took photography in high school. I love it. I haven't done it in a very long time. But when I I can definitely praise a photographer when I see a good one. And this one, I'm I'm pleased with it. Brian says, anciently, apocalypse meant roughly disclosure. Interesting. And thank you for that, Brian. Okay, so let's get into this because this one is definitely throwing in a lot of conspiracies and 
things that I would like to hear your side of because the moon in itself, all right, just the moon in itself is whack. All the information that you can find online, even on the dark webs or on the light webs, whatever the regular webs is, they are so opposite. They are so yin and yang. It's like, which one do you believe? Those that say that the moon isn't even real. Those that say that there was never a moon landing. Those that say that there are aliens on the moon and there are like full-blown civilizations going on there. The possibilities and the answers are endless. And we're not going to get into all of that. We, Jimmy and I actually did a show on the mysteries of the moon on this channel. You can find it here where we cover everything referring to the science and to the conspiracies. And you can find it um, if you're into that kind of topic. Just type in moon and on my YouTube and you'll find it there. But this is bizarre because the Artemis program it received all of this praise and amazement of like yeah we're going back to the moon after 50 years this is so exciting we're gonna bring tools we're gonna put the first colored person the first woman on the moon this that and the other and there was just so much of like yeah right and then as of recently i mean like this week maybe last week if we're stretching it that far they're saying well we were supposed to launch it of 20 in 2024 but now 2025 maybe 2026 what's going on here why you had 50 flipping years to prep if you already went there once so some say some others don't I, I don't care if you do or don't that's not my place to tell you but let's say that they did right you had 50 years to enhance your suits your craft and to get up there now we can bring in this other idea of maybe there's already stuff going on there. There's already already habitats and there's resources and tools and people just shouldn't know about it just yet, right? There's there's like there's that aspect. And then I thought to myself this morning when I was reading this article because I'm I'm just like you, some of you. I'm very new to this topic and all of this information. It's new to me, and I thought to myself, okay. That's the United States. That That's NASA. What about all these other government agencies in other parts of the world, like Russia, China, India? There was that whole space race with Russia and the U.S. Why can't Russia send people over there and give us the information about the bloody moon? What if they're all in it together? You know, there's that aspect. Or you can say, oh, well, they don't have the advanced enough technology to do so. Okay, I mean, it sounds... Uh, for some people, like, kind of narcissistic, and maybe just a little bit. But what I'm getting at here is, if that is the case, that means all the countries are in on it. Because there's no longer this incredible race like there used to be. Now it's just, yeah, we, we can wait a few more years, and ain't nothing. It's no big thing but a chicken wing. And I'm thinking, I don't, are we going to go to the moon or not? Okay, I want to traverse the stars so bad. And if I could start off with the moon, I'm in it to win it. I'm ready to go. Mars, send me there right now. And just a one-way ticket is fine. But then to say, yes, no, yes, no, maybe so. Don't play with my heart like that. Okay, my heart is not a puppet for you to dangle with the strings and tell it what to do. This, this little guy is sensitive. All right, and it's the size of my fist as well, which is kind of crazy. So you have like a brain that's like eight to 10 pounds and then your heart, just the size of your fist, crazy stuff. But don't, don't be playing with me like that. All right. Now those can mention astral projection. Let me tell you. Okay. I mean, let me just say this. Jimmy and I did a whole show on astral projection, OBEs, NDEs, I have been attempting, and I'm and I'm telling you this, all right, those that are listening, as my friend, I'm telling you this, I have been trying to astral project since I was 16. I have never been able to do it. You know how frustrating it is? Almost every single night, I'll try and I'll say, you know what, tonight's my night. I got this one. I can do this. I'm, I'm ready to go and traverse the stars without my spaceship, without my TARDIS. I can do this. And I have yet to succeed. Now, I'm not giving up, all right? I, I, I ain't no giver-upper. But it can be a little disheartening from time to time when I just 
try and then it doesn't work. Same with lucid dreaming. Could only do it once. And that was an interesting trip. Of course, the first thing I did was flying in my lucid dream. And that was pretty sick. And it, yeah, that was just that one time. Now you know a little more about that little aspect. But with the Artemis moon landing, the Artemis program, the Artemis project, because it's a bunch of different stuff going on. It's it's the first one already happened, which was going around the moon and bringing in that spaceship. They had Snoopy, they had Barbie, they had tree seeds, things like that. This this one was the Artemis three moon landing, where they were going to take people to the moon. And they were going to be bring other ones by the because they wanted by the year referring to NASA, I believe it was by the year 2040 or 2060. They already wanted to place habitats um, like on the moon. In the same way that in Houston, Texas, there's a handful of people that are practicing in order to go on Mars, and they, I think they were locked. I think they're locked up for about 375 days, give or take a little bit. And so they're in Houston, and they're in this kind of Mars type of environment, practicing to go to Mars. So if the Artemis moon landing is delayed, will that Mars landing with people? also be delayed? Do they work hand in hand? Are they two completely different projects that do not factor with one another? Is everything depending on this Artemis moon landing or are they independent? And then where's Elon Musk in all of this? He wanted to get people on Mars by the year 2026. I have not heard any updates on that. Okay. I, I would even want to sign up, but I don't, I don't have any of the credentials. I can barely keep a plant alive. Okay. So let alone like trying to grow a whole farm on Mars, but we haven't heard much information about Elon's ambition to in a way beat NASA. Okay. He's already doing that with SpaceX and he wants to get to Mars first. And we haven't heard any information on that. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. Oh gosh, you know what? It's it's bothering me. It really is. So there's a lot of articles referring to the moon landing, the Artemis moon landing uh, project, and there's different aspects depending on obviously who wrote it on how they're going to address the issue referring to the science aspect referring to the more the conspiracy aspect you can read it i will place one of the links in the description box below for you to go ahead and read because it does go into really great detail but we're going to get into our next article here and it's this is actually a really cool image but it's about um paranormal abilities and this is really cool in some ways. Now, not everyone believes it. Some thinks it's a total hoax, like, you know, seances, uh, Ouija boards, tarot cards. Yeah, push that aside. But like, if you're able to like be a medium and actually communicate with ghosts or who knows what, that is really sick. And if, if it's a real talent that you have, all the power to you. You are a solid eight out of 10. But here's really interesting because people are saying, look, if the paranormal is real, if people that are able to communicate with the dead is real. I will pay you for it. And this is referring to the James Rendy Educational Foundation, which is giving a million dollars to someone that has proof of psychic abilities. They will receive a million dollars. That's really, really cool. However, this is nothing new. Robert Bigelow has done some very similar things over the years. And right now he has a fund, a grant going on referring to consciousness of life after death, which is really, really cool. Bigelow has been one of the very few people that has put his money where his mouth is, where if he has a serious question, he will give people the resources and the funding if they are able to provide efficient information. He's also the guy that brought that bought Skinwalker Ranch in the 90s and then sold it to Brandon Fugel, the current owner of Skinwalker Ranch, which I have interviewed. If you are interested in his background and um, Skinwalker Ranch, you can find it right here on this channel. But with Robert Bigelow, He's had a really um, interesting and in some ways a tragic life because his wife died a few years ago. His son passed away 
a long time ago when he was really young. And so these traumatic experiences created and I would almost say helped Bigelow to begin to ask these questions, but thirsty, hungry, and desiring the answers. um, And with all the money that he has with Bigelow Aerospace, working with the government, with his contracts, with NIDS and things like this, he was saying, I have these serious questions. I want the answers. I'm going to put my money where my mouth is and look into this. So this particular one referring to the James Randi Educational Foundation isn't new, but it's still really interesting to hear what they have to say. I want to just address this because I mentioned tarot cards. Chris says, tarot works. I have a quick, quick story for you because you know what? today's kind of more of a story time day and articles, of course, but let me tell you a story. So I've never worked, I've never used, I've never touched tarot cards, cards. And let me explain why. I knew a lady, and this is like a wacky story, and you can believe it or not, I don't care, but I'm going to tell you the story anyway, because it, 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 it instilled in me so much so that I will not touch them. Because I knew this lady, one of my, one of my mom's friends at the time, she was mentioning to me, Over some ice cream, by the way. That is the best way to have a conversation. Actually, it was Froyo. Oof, delicious stuff. And she was telling me a few years ago that she was working on a tarot card and she was doing a tarot card reading for someone that she knew. And she's doing all this stuff. And I don't really know how it works, by the way. Let me just let me just say that there. But she pulls out this card of death. And there's a lot of different interpretations on what that card means, like the Grim Reaper, that it's just like uh, not just death of you or a loved one, but just kind of like leaving something or or something that leaves you in some way. Turns out after she had pulled that card a few days later, that woman, that client, one of her loved ones died. Okay. She goes back to the tarot card lady, my mom's friend. She does the reading again. That card of death comes up one more time. And then a few days later, a few weeks later, someone else passes away. And then she has like really bad, like health issues. And I thought, real or not, superstitious or not, I'm going to take a big hard pass on that one. All right. I am not here to tell you the future. I am not here to attempt and understand the future. I'm going to live it in the moment and figure it out as I go along. But I'm not playing with tarot cards and I'm especially not playing with Ouija boards. No, that for me, for me, that's a pass. It's okay. I, I can live my life very happily by never playing with either of those two things. So back to this particular thing, this article, because for this challenge, it is it remains ongoing in the CFIIG, which is the Center for Inquiry Investigations Group Paranormal Challenge, which is also offering $500,000 to anyone who can demonstrate any paranormal, supernatural, or occult power under scientific test conditions. This has taken place in the 1800s with the skull experiment, referring to the seances. This has taken place with Robert Bigelow over the last 10 years. This has taken place now with this foundation and also this organization called the CFIIG. And are we getting different results? Are we getting the same results with the skull experiment in particular, which took place? Oh. I want to say it was 1880 something or the early 1900s. Someone someone will find that answer for me because I know it was in that time frame. They found out that it was a hoax, referring to seances, for their tests and the people that they tested it on. Then you have Bigelow. And he's found some interesting information, which not all of it is made public, by the way. And then for this particular one, will this information be made public? Let's say these psychic abilities are real and can be tested. Will that information be made public? There's another test done on a handful of mediums done by a certain university. And the university escapes me, but I've covered it a handful of times where they spoke to a bunch, I want to say like 30 mediums, and they were able to do tests. They passed a bunch of them a bunch of the tests that were done, but people have always had an interest with psychic abilities, with mediums, trying to communicate with the dead, and placing it under a telescope. So in 2023, I 
honestly, I thought we could do better. But maybe these rigorous tests might be like nothing that we've ever seen before. But they don't provide us that information. So don't really know how these people are going to be tested. Hmm? All right. This next one is very cool because it's about life on another planet. I love uh, these articles. And this one was published in the Astrophysical Journal Letters on January 3rd. And this talks about the LHS 114B planet. Why can't we give them cooler names? I feel like they just put it in the AI generator and say, you know what? That name will do. <sighs> bring bring someone artsy into your science team and give these planets better names. But this orbits a small star called the LHS 1140 on the constellation Cetus. So let me just kind of back it up because that was a little joke about artists uh, and having them on your team and giving them cool names. But I'm also being serious. But in reality, the reason to why they had these kinds of names, and this was a really great example in this particular sentence, is that they, they name a star and then they name the planets very similar to the star, like Proxima Centauri. Okay, you have that star system and then you have all the planets that go from B to E. And so it just makes it easier for people to just kind of get an understanding, like astrobiologists, astrophysicists, scientists, to kind of know where they're looking at. And people can kind of understand you as well. Which was giving it like a crazy, wacky name, like Jamba Juice Jam. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I couldn't think that fast on my feet. But Jamba Juice, yeah, that'd be a cool name for a planet. But then they say, well, where is it? Well, it's in the star system of. JWST. And it's like, I don't really know where that is. You see what I'm saying here? So they try to make it really easy, but they make it really boring as well. Okay. Which it's a love hate relationship. But this particular star system was discovered back in 2017. And the LHS 1140b initially appeared to be a rocky planet 1.7 times wider than Earth. However, new analysis suggests it might be a water world or have an extensive atmosphere of light elements like hydrogen and helium and it's not dense enough to be purely rock this is cool because we were able to get this information with the new technology that we have especially with the james webb space telescope um, that was able just to kind of like look at these kinds of planets that the hubble and the spritzer they they gave the the foundation and the groundwork, but then the JWST is kind of filling in those gaps. There are more telescopes in the works. They easily take 10, 15, 20 years to make and several billion dollars to create as well. But right now, the JWST is one of our most highest, amazing, most functional telescopes that we have in space. And also, there are telescopes here on planet Earth that are able to see through space um, that are really significant, like the Giant Magellan Telescope in Chile, which is almost done being made. The Extremely Giant Telescope. No, it, it's the Extremely Large Telescope. because I love that name. It's so awesome. How could I forget it? which is another one also in Chile. And these are just like ginormous telescopes that, that have taken almost 20 years to build. And they are able, hopefully, some of them are still kind of under tests, some of them are done, but to be able to see almost, if not as far as the James Webb Space Telescope. So pretty cool stuff. Love it. I really do. So here, what they're saying with this particular planet is that with this new information that has been given to them by the JWST, the James Webb Space Telescope, also known as the Webb Telescope, they're saying, well, we first thought it was just a rocky planet, a little bit bigger than Earth. Eh, nothing to see here. But now it could potentially be a water world. And that is really significant because as the saying goes, water equals life, life and water coexist. That's definitely not the exact phrase that is used but you know what i'm referring to here and so this is why this is incredibly significant also you're dealing with elements like hydrogen and helium as well which are very abundant in the universe so super duper duper cool stuff but i have one more for you for all of my vulcanologists and i'm not referring to the planet vulcan in star trek which when i first heard the word 
volcanologist. Um, that's what that's what came to mind. And I said, whoa, there's a whole thing dedicated to studying Vulcan. And the answer is no. A big fat no, actually. But this is still really cool because volcanoes, they just have a very special place in humanity's hearts for so many different reasons. But really cool about volcanoes, aside from this article, obviously, is that one, it just erupts all of this magna and it comes down. It's filled and it's crazy because it like burns everything in its way. But then once it solidifies, it's some of the most nutritious stuff that plants live for. And so that's why places around volcanoes are so luscious and so amazing. And people are willing to take that risk to live next to a volcano or on a volcano because of the harvest and the life that they can have. Pompeii, all right? They took that risk and they died for what they believed in at the time. Mm. Iceland. Okay, another example. It's been a lot of eruptions going on over in Iceland. Crazy stuff. But with this, this is really, really cool. It's referring to energy because there's so many ideas on how to get energy. You have windmills, you have solar, you have water, you have fossil fuels, all of these things. Well, scientists are saying, dude, let's drill to the deepest parts of a volcano and let's get some energy. Uh, this, is, this is very ambitious. This is also very scary. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it could be, it could go great. You could get a bunch of energy or, or cause another eruption. Hmm. Toughy here. But drilling into the site of a volcano might sound like a very daring venture, but a team of researchers is planning to do just that in Iceland in the coming years. And this groundbreaking project led by the KMT, which is the Krafla Magna Testbed, Magma, I said Magma, didn't I? Magma Testbed Organization aims to enhance our understanding of magma behavior and volcanic eruptions. Additionally, the team hopes to harness a variety of limitless sources of clean energy. And this is such cool stuff. I know for all of my volcano nerd nerds, you're like, whoa, this is the best thing ever. But this is, to be fair, to be fair, people have been thinking about this for a very long time, but now they're finally executing this idea. Because the initiative named after the Krafla volcano, volcanic cauldra, is not the first attempt to drill near a magma chamber. Dun, dun, dun. An earlier project permeated a magma vault, halting further drilling due to uh, extreme heat, <laughs> but proving that such drilling doesn't, doesn't trigger eruptions. So one information we already knew. The other tidbit, it's like, well, this is really exciting. So like, yeah, obviously you're going to have extreme heat. I mean, I almost rolled my eyes there. But for this kind of drilling to not create and trigger eruptions, this is fantastic information. Couldn't you imagine? All right. You're driving your car or you have the heater on your, in your house and someone asks you, dude, dude, what's your what's your electricity bill? How are you like sustaining all of this energy? And you say, volcanoes instant brownie points right there. You would be the coolest person on the block if you were to say that. Even if you were in the whole town where everyone uses volcanic energy, you'd be the coolest town on planet Earth. Well, one of the coolest, to be fair. Sick, sick stuff. But the upcoming endeavors face significant challenges, including developing drills and sensors that can withstand the harsh conditions inside magma chambers. And if successful, the drilling set to begin in 2026, the same year as the Artemis III moon landing, by the way, could provide unprecedented insights into the formation of continental crust and improve eruption predictions. This is really cool. You know who would really appreciate this? Japan. They would love this information. This is amazing. But moreover, a second drilling project planned for 2028 aims to exploit the intense heat and pressure of the underground environment to generate clean energy. And this ambitious project represents a unique opportunity to explore and potentially harness one of nature's most powerful forces. This could either go super amazing 
and be like the best idea ever or it could go so bad if let's say you drill into a certain area that maybe you shouldn't have and you get an explosion now it did say it will not trigger eruptions but you can't say that's the case for every place that you're going to drill. There could be a few exceptions, don't you think? Now, these people are much more educated than I am. They actually have a degree in volcanology, okay, unlike myself. I only have my degree in communication and business. But this could be an incredible step forward if it goes well with this project in 2026 and the world says, let's do it. Let's go for it. Ah, I would love to see this, wouldn't you? Now, out of all the articles that we covered today, which one was your favorite? Let me know in the live chat. Let me know in the comments. I do try my absolute best to read all of the comments because I want to know, because I love doing the show with you, by the way, but I want to know out of everything that we covered, which one was your favorite? For myself, I might have to say getting information about the skiff was really cool, but also volcanoes. They have a special place in my heart, okay? It's super cool stuff, especially like making a, a volcano made out of mashed potatoes and gravy can never go wrong with that as well. So this article really hit home for me, but I do want to know for you, which one was your favorite? Rick says exoplanets. Oh, that's a good one. Chris says all of them. You know what? That is the right answer, to be honest with you. If I had to be, Paul says volcanoes. Heck yes. Love it. John says Volcano power sounds interesting. It really does. It sounds very cool. I'm getting a lot of volcanoes, actually. Yes. Well, volcanoes will end it all. It could do. Could do. That's why you got to be careful when trying to harness this kind of energy. <laughs> yeah. So that is it for today. Please scan this QR code if you are watching this on a laptop or on a computer and there I'll take you to all of my social media links. And also now as of 2024, I am writing articles for all of the shows that air in 2024. You can find that on my website or on medium.com. Also on there, if you are enjoying all of my work, consider being a Patreon because right now, there's merch involved, and it's really exciting because I'm not selling that merch. Uh-uh, I'm giving it out, and it's really cool stuff that you will not find anywhere else. Also, for all of my incredible YouTube members, go over to Patreon. Honestly, I'll get so many more perks and benefits than on YouTube. I'm just saying. I'm just putting it out there. But that is it for today. Follow me on Twitter at eyes underscore on the skies for all of my updates and news, and also on Instagram at strange paradigms. If you want to continue the conversation, bring it over to the Discord server with 3,000 other like-minded members. Share your thoughts, your insights, your experiences, and more. That is it for today. I will see you next time. Be safe, and remember, keep your eyes on the skies. <laughs>